In today's video I show you which surgical approach was used to perform the hip arthroplasty and how you can see that on MRI. Watch till the end of this video because I show you then why it is important that you know these different surgical approaches. So basically when the orthopedic surgeon is doing a total hip replacement he has four different approaches that he can enter the joint and these are the for classic approaches we have the anterior approach here between the rectus femoris muscle and the tensor fasciae muscle and then we have the anterolateral approach which is running just laterally to the tensor muscle and between the abductor muscles into the joint then we have the lateral approach which is also known as the transgluteal approach and as you can see here with this approach there has to be some damage to the abductor tendons mainly the lateral portion of the gluteus medius tendon and also the gluteus minimus tendon. Then we have the posterior approach here and with this approach there has to be some damage to the short external rotator tendons. Now to identify the surgical approach it's the best strategy to use the axials and you can see here if you scroll through what you're looking for are these tiny little susceptibility artifacts. Let me make this a little bit bigger. You can see if you scroll through the typical susceptibility artifacts here along the surgical approach and you can immediately see that this surgical approach was a lateral approach. Sometimes these susceptibility artifacts are not that obvious and one tip here is go to your sagittals and go to the most lateral portion or section of this uh, sequence and there you can see the susceptibility artifacts and also the scarring much easier and you can follow this through if you cut along here you immediately realize why there has to be some damage here uh, at the level of the lateral portion of the gluteus medius tendon and also the gluteus minimus tendon which is severely damaged here a lot of scar tissue and tendinopathy and also the lateral portion here is not normal anymore the supraposterior portion here of the gluteus medius tendon, however, is typically intact with this approach. So the surgeon has to release or cut through these tendons here to get access to the joint. This is an example of an anterior approach. Again, take your axials, scroll through a little bit faster than you would expect, and you can see popping up here this susceptibility artifact along the tensor muscle here and then going in here between the rectus femoris muscle and the tensor muscle into the joint. So this is an anterior approach and what you often see is that the approach does not start here from this direction but more from a lateral orientation. So that's quite normal and it's going down here into the joint. I was looking for quite some time to find a patient with an anterolateral approach and this is the best that I managed but it's unfortunately not clear. So first of all we have this fatty hypertrophy of the tensor muscle here. We have this uh, scarring going on here at the level of this tensor fasciae muscle and you don't really see a lot of susceptibility artifacts on the axial T1 sequence here. If you go to the sagittal sequence and to the most lateral portion you can clearly see the cut and then you have the susceptibility artifacts and if you follow them they seem to run in front of the abductor tendons into the joint but because this patient has at the same time damage to the abductor tendons especially the lateral portion of the gluteus medius tendon and also the gluteus minimus tendon it is not clear whether this was um, maybe still a lateral approach or they try to go along here and then we have this ossification here sitting on the bone and you can see the abductor muscles are significantly uh, fatty infiltrated with some atrophy and the tendon themselves are not normal. This is an example of a patient after a posterior approach and again I have a look at the axials and you can see if you scroll through a little bit faster than usually you can see this susceptibility artifacts here from a posterior lateral or posterior angle and they are running between the gluteus muscle uh, between the gluteus maximus muscle and the gluteus medius muscle so this was a posterior approach and what we expect 
is uh, damage to the short external rotators here we can't see these different tendons also there is severe fatty atrophy of the short external rotator muscles because the tendons are damaged what they typically do they have to release them and sometimes um, fix them back to the joint capsule but that is hard to tell just have a look at the different muscles that are damaged so here is the posterior approach now you might ask yourself why is this even important that we identify the surgical approach now first of all it shows that you know your stuff basically that's one of the main reasons but the other reason is also because it guides you to the different portions of the soft tissue structures around the hip that are uh, damaged and we performed a study at the Balagrist University Hospital just about that topic here you'll find the link to this study in the description down below so basically you can see here on this image which structures that are damaged by which surgical approach so we have the posterior approach the lateral approach the anterolateral and the anterior approach here and this is the external obturator tendon the internal obturator tendon and the piriformis tendon and you can see with the posterior approach they are significantly more heavily damaged than with all the other approaches the same is true for the abductor tendons and you can see with the transgluteal approach here in green we have significantly more damage to these structures especially the lateral portion and the of the gluteus medius tendon and the gluteus minimus tendon if you want to know more about this just uh, google the paper or click the link down below just to summarize the anterior approach between the rectus femoris muscle and the tensor fasciolate muscle here with the scarring there the anterolateral approach between the tensor muscle and the abductor muscles here nicely depicted the transgluteal approach here straight to the soft tissue structures with a corresponding damage to the tendon and muscles and the fascia and last but not least the posterior approach with the damage to the short external rotator tendons that's it for today i hope this was helpful to you if so please comment below hit the like button and also make sure to subscribe if you haven't already see you next week